Hey guys, let's get straight to the point. Today, I'm going to show you guys how I edit Fujifilm photos on a Mac for free, basically. I did one similar video before, but yesterday I went on to a photo walk with a couple of friends in downtown Vancouver. I loved images because it was an overcast day. The lighting was so soft. It was almost like we have a gigantic softbox on top of our head the whole time. So the photos are super good. I'm just going to show you guys my process of editing the photos on the Mac for free because some people, they don't want to pay like myself. I don't want to pay for a subscription and I don't want to pay to buy a program just to edit video. Uh, I mean photos because I'm not a photographer yet. So let's get straight into it. Before you start editing in the photos app, you will have to import the photos, obviously. Um, one way that I prefer doing is to open up Finder, open up the folder of the photos and right click share the photo into the photos app. It's I think it's share add to photos. That way you will ensure that you have the raw photo imported into photos because if you go to the photos app and on the left hand side, if you see your SD card or hard drive, you open it up. And if there is a JPEG and raw photo for the same picture, if you select it, it says JPEG plus raw. So it's kind of confusing because you're only importing one photo, but it says JPEG plus raw. So that's super confusing. That's why I recommend opening up Finder folder and right click share add to photos. That way you have the photos in the import section or the recent section. So now we're looking at the photos. These are the photos that my friends picked and I love every single one of them. I'm just going to quickly pick some of them to edit to show you guys how I would do it regularly. So let's say this photo right here, it says raw at the top left corner. I'm just going to double click and open it. And now I have a raw image for sure, because I know the film simulation I used was classic Chrome and it does not look like that at all. So this is a raw photo and you can see that on the top left corner, it says raw. What we have to do now is to click on edit on the top right corner. And one thing you want to ensure, even if you have the raw stamp at the top left of the photo is to go to image and let's see. Oh, the option is grayed out because there is no JPEG plus raw. If you have JPEG plus raw, at the top left corner of the photo right here, you will have this use raw as original option to check. If you don't check that, you might be, no, actually you will be editing the JPEG instead of the raw. But I have a raw photo in here for sure. So that's why this option is grayed out. So I'm good. So the first thing I would do is probably play with the exposure for a little bit. Um, I will lift the shadow for this photo because it's quite dark but as you can see the dynamic range latitude of the Fujifilm X-Pro2 which is a 7 or 8 year old camera and we're using the Fujifilm 35mm f1.4 lens which is a 10 year old lens the sharpness dynamic range color rendition they're almost perfect to me and I just got that lens and I'm pretty sure I'll make a photo. I mean, not a photo. <laughs> I'll make a video just about that lens and the X-Pro2 because that is my favorite combination for taking photos and video um, right now. So I will show you guys in another video. Let's get back into editing. So I will lift the shadow. This is great. I'm going to lower the highlight for a little bit, but it's not that important because everything was really soft. The highlight roll off is super soft because of the overcast day. You can actually uncheck the box at the top right corner under light and you see the before and after. This is before, this is after. A super huge difference. If I have, let's say clouds, like visible, visible clouds on the sky, I will lower the highlights to get the clouds back. But so far, I don't have any clouds, clouds. The whole sky was filled with clouds. By the way, I am recording on my Sony, uh, not A7 IV, Sony ZV-E10 with a small rig mic right here. And I'm editing in my room. And I mentioned it before, I have really crazy travel, uh, not travel, traffic noise outside of my room. So I will be using DaVinci Resolve voice isolation, the AI one 
in the new version to see if it's actually good or bad or um, you guys let us know let me know in the comment section below if you can hear me clearly without hearing the traffic noise after adjusting the highlight and shadow I feel like I will just go to the curve and try to create a curve for this image first before I do any kind of contrast adjustment I can lower this point right here and I'll take a look and see if a general S curve would do the job so this is before this is after I recently just learned that some people actually do a W curve for a more vintage kind of look so let's see so this is a W shape curve and this is before the W shape curve I feel like I kind of like the W shape curve this is W shape curve you can see that the highlight roll off is different this is W this is S so the S curve is definitely higher contrast compared to the W curve but I'll do the W curve for now because I really like the highlight roll off it's much softer not as contrasty especially on um, the subject's face it's really important to have a softer roll off instead of harsher unless it's a creative choice so I'll stick with this W curve let's say let's see if I lift the shadow or the darkest part of the image and see what went oops not too much of course so this is after before so the darkest part of the image if I do it again it will be lifted by this move you can kind of tell in this area that everything is lifted which is pretty cool because I really like the vintage kind of film look which the shadows are usually lifted so I'll stick with this weird W shape curve with the darkest point lift up a little bit and let me play with contrast a little bit to see how it looks um, no actually I don't want it to be too contrasty this is already good enough and with the black points you can lift the blacks even further or darken it to increase the contrast again but I prefer having like a natural one so this picture overall it's already really 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 nice saturation I usually will lower it just because originally the colors are really vibrant in the raw photo version I use classic chrome most of the time on my X-Pro2 and that one has a really muted color tone so I would usually lower the contrast I hope that I'm not editing this photo and make it into a classic chrome situation or else my friend will be like you didn't really do anything <laughs> um, I'm going to increase the vibrant for a little bit so it's a little bit more natural that way in the mid-tone cast is basically the um, color cast I don't touch this part usually so that's looking pretty good I can always click this button at the top left beside revert to original click and hold and this is the original image and this is after the adjustments that we just did um, white balance I was in auto white balance no adjustment on the color tone at all so I'm really happy with the white balance other Fujifilm cameras the auto white balance but if you really want to edit you can maybe add a little bit of a warmth I feel like this is really cold so if I can add in some warmth you can see that the jacket looks a little bit more natural this is cooler than what I saw with my own eyes so I can add in just a little bit of warmth again when it comes to photo editing I don't do crazy things on the raw photos because um, unless it's a creative choice I don't want to go too much to ruin the uh, the overall image especially if my friends for example they want these photos to be in their portfolios I don't want to make it too crazy I feel like the colors are still really too vibrant let's see this is negative 0.16 I can lower it a little bit or hmm yeah I think maybe 0.18 yeah if I don't touch the saturation it'll be like this this is after the saturation yeah 
I like a more subtle color tone instead of like super punchy colors. So now here I have selective color where I can play around with the colors in the photo. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. Usually I think there's like seven. So this is missing, I think a pink, but it has magenta. So um, what happened is you can actually select a specific color in the picture and lower certain things. Let's say red, you lower the saturation, you can see that the skin tone is completely ruined because there's a lot of red in skin tones. But of course you can also play with the hue to shift the color tone of the skin or the red channel and make it more like reddish or like yellowish. I don't know why you would do that, but oh, it's also missing orange. Yes, orange and pink is missing here, but it's good enough. So for yellow, usually I will try to play with the hue and make it a little bit more orangey almost. Because that makes the entire skin tone of your subject a little bit healthier. Not that she had like unhealthy skin, but this is before it's kind of yellowish. But shifting this to negative 17-ish for this photo, specific photo, it makes her skin a lot healthier to me. So let me zoom in 100%. Yep, so this is after, this is before. You can definitely see that there is a yellow hue, greenish hue on her skin. After doing this, it's much more healthier to me. Green, um, usually if you want to know if there's any green in the image, the quickest way is to jack up the saturation and you can see that uh, the chromatic aberration is like popping up like crazy. But if you play around with the saturation slider, you know that the, the I don't know why I'm pointing with my finger. Um, I should point with my mouse. On the staircase, there's some green in there because you can see that if you increase it, it will be like that. But green, not the most common thing that I would adjust because if I, unless I am taking a photo in a, uh, in the forest or with like trees in the back, then I'll probably play with it. Um, so green, I don't usually do too, too much. Maybe I'll move it to a little bit more yellow again, because green is not that common in skin tone. It's probably just by a little bit, but I'll still do this. And now, the staircase is much more vibrant. Blue, again, not the most common color in the world. Um, I can do increased saturation, decreased saturation. You can tell that here, the jeans are being affected. The staircase had a little bit of a blue tone or blue tint, and definitely the sky had a blue tint. So if you don't want that to be distracting. I think this is too distracting to have too many colors in one photo, at least for me. I can even lower it to like 100%. I don't mind at all. Maybe 80 so the jeans are not affected that badly. Some people, they will play around with the hue to make it like, oh, cyan for the blue and things like that. But for this photo shoot, I don't want it to look super teal and orange because that's not natural. Um, same thing with blue, blue. Like this is darker blue, you can see that it's in the jeans, the staircase, and the sky. So if I'm going to adjust it, I can lower it so the focus is more on the person's face instead of being distracted with like, whoa, everything around her. And of course, this one, again, you can play with the slider to make it more teal-ish, the lighter blue. Because the slider, the hue slider, it's making it shifting towards left and right off whatever color that you selected. So that's how it works. And of course you can play with the luminance and you can make the jeans lighter or darker. In this situation, I might bring it up a little bit brighter, but make sure you keep in mind that when you are making one color brighter, that means the, um, the color saturation of that specific color, it's gonna be lower because you make it brighter it's obviously it's going to be less saturated so here this is after playing with this 
select a color. I have one more, the magenta, same thing. I'm just gonna jack it up and lower it. It seems like it's on the brick wall and also her face that has the magenta tint. I feel like if I want it to be more healthy again with the skin tone, I would increase it. So this is with the increase off the magenta. This is oops, without. So with and without. So I will probably increase it by a little bit. Not much, again, stick with the natural kind of look. And I will show you the before and after. This is after, before editing, after editing, including the light and the W curve and selective color. And now I have noise reduction. This picture was taken during daytime, so I'm not too worried. It's not going to be super noisy. Here I have sharpening. Again, this is completely up to you. I don't like super sharp images, but this is already really sharp. But if you want to, you know, make it even sharper for whatever reason. Again, don't go crazy about it. Don't go like this and you will have like a really weird outline of everything. Don't go 100%, go with like maybe 20-ish. I know this is super subtle, but it will show. Like, I don't know how to show you guys, but this is after before, after. Vignette, which is the next part. This is a creative choice to me, at least. You can lower the vignette if your lens is creating a really strong vignette. And you can also add a vignette to make it more like a frame surrounding the person, right here, like this. So it's completely up to you. Sometimes I add a vignette just to make it look more like a frame for that person. I think I really like this editing. This is before the editing. This is after. And I will probably show you guys the classic Chrome that I had with the Fujifilm X-Pro2, the original classic Chrome that came straight out of the camera. And cropping, it really depends if your photo needs cropping. I think this is pretty good to me. I don't think I need to crop it. I don't need to straighten it. If you do, you just go to the crop section and of course, you have straightening. You can do the adjustment. I don't think I need any adjustment. I feel like I'm ruining it by doing it. <laughs> and you can choose the aspect ratio here, of course, but I usually just let my friends do it after because cropping, it's nothing. It's super easy on their um, smart devices. So this is pretty good. The only thing that I wish the Photos app on a Mac has is adding film grain, but it does not have any feature like that. So I think that's the main thing that is missing compared to a paid app or software. That's one thing. And another thing is you might want to batch edit, you know, I don't know, like 50 or 100 photo with the same edit. You can do that if you have one photo that it's already edited. You can copy the adjustments and paste it onto more than one photo. But the problem is you cannot save the presets. You cannot save, oh, I like this kind of editing. I want to save it for the future. You can't, at least at the moment. I think I am on the latest Mac OS. Now it's like December 14th, 2022. So in the future, if they add that feature to save presets on the Photos app, that will be game changing because a lot of people would love it. Um, some feature, that you might have seen on other editing software is touch up. So let's say if I'm sorry, because this photo wasn't a close up, so you might be seeing like some noise. Um, but here under retouch, you have the brush. So it's a similar thing that you do compared to like other software. You can kind of smoothen things out. And if there's like a pimple or something, you can definitely do that to make it disappear. And it's quite good. Of course, it's not going to be as good as, you know, other software. So I was just doing it super roughly to remove some of the uh, things that you don't want to have in the picture. You can literally remove like things with that retouch feature. But 
Again, I don't do it that often. I try to keep the photos as natural as possible unless your clients or your friends have really complicated like skin condition, then maybe you'll have to do it, but I don't do it that much. So that's why I really like this um, feature, but I don't use it that much. Red eye, if you don't use flash, usually you won't have red eyes. Um, one more thing that I think they should have in here is to have the color tone map that I think Lightroom has, Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom on Mac has, is to add in different colors into, let's say, the shadows or the mid-tone or the highlights. So that's where usually people would play with to put or make the picture more um, teal and orangey. That's the easiest way, but you can also use the curve to do that. You can open up a red curve, add in some points and minus you know red and you'll have blue and greenish thing on the shadow the color tint not thing but again don't go crazy i think this is pretty cool actually yeah so this is how you can add in some blue and green into the shadow you need to know the color spectrum in order not the color spectrum but um the opposite of red is like green and blue and then the opposite of blue is yellow so you kind of have to remember that in order to use the curve to add in those colors so it's much easier if they have the color wheel so that's the edit that i'm happy with with this photo i'm going to show you the original this is before editing already really good like fujifilm colors are great like sometimes i don't even bother like editing them JPEG, especially classic chrome or other film simulation or um, recipes, they're really good already. This is after. So this is more like a portfolio kind of editing. I really like it. Um, if I don't, let's say if I don't do the red curve, this is really natural. This is more dramatic, <laughs> but I'll, I'll see. I'll see if I want to do this because like sometimes people don't like something too dramatic. <laughs> anyway, I'll just stick with this. And now I'm going to show you how to copy and paste this editing onto different photos so you can save your time. So what happened is you will just, you have to in, be in this editing page and someone is mowing the lawn. <laughs> I hope that DaVinci Resolve is going to do a good job isolating my voice because it's going to be super annoying in the video to have a lot of noise in the background, but hopefully it's gonna be fine. Um, here, you have to be in the editing page in order to copy the settings or this uh, adjustments. You have to click on image and you click on copy edits and you click done. You go back to all your photos. Just pick the ones with similar background. Let's see if I have any. Did they choose anything? Yeah, so here I have another photo with a similar background. I can just open it up. I can, oh, actually I have two photos. So I can select both of them by holding on to shift on my keyboard. I can right click and paste edit and you will see the adjustment. So if I open it up and if I click on edit, all the adjustments are copied. But this picture is super bright compared to the other ones. So I might have to like play around with the exposure and also the highlights and shadow. So just to make it a little bit contrasty compared to before. And this is how you copy the settings. This is before the editing, this is after. This photo might not show that big of a adjustment for whatever reason, maybe the white balance was different, but you know what I did like, basically just copy the settings and apply it to another similar photo. I don't have another similar photo here, but what you can do is actually it's sometimes you just copy the settings and paste it onto like any other photos that you think is gonna work. And it might, it might work. You never know. To be honest with you, I can go image, paste edit. Yeah, I think it's working fine. <laughs> so this is what I would do. Um, sometimes when it's loading the image, this photo is not in focus, <laughs> um, but she picked it, which is okay. 
um, sometimes when it's loading the image, it might be in a lower resolution, but it will load up once you give the computer some time, depends on the processor. This is after the editing, this is before the adjustment, which is quite dramatic already, to be honest with you. I might just brighten it up a little bit. Maybe not the shadow too much, just like this. And of course, if you have anything that you need to retouch, you can definitely do that. Again, this photo is not in focus, so that's why it's kind of hard to find spots to adjust. Even if it's the same adjustment on another person, sometimes it will work quite well. So let me try this because I always have similar ways of editing a photo, always lifting the shadow, lower the highlight. So why not, right? Just to save some time. Yeah, it's working completely fine. This is after, this is before. Everything looks pretty cool. The only thing is I think the green jacket that he was wearing, it's turning yellow probably because I changed a hue like too much. So I'm just gonna drag this back and maybe lower the luminance of the green just to make minor adjustment per photo. That's how I would do it. One thing I forgot to mention is there's no lens correction or chromatic aberration adjustment or correction in the Photos app. If they can add it, that would be great because you will see chromatic aberrations and vignettes and everything, all the barrel distortion and stuff compared to using Lightroom. So this is a free app already on your Mac, which is the Photos app. So maybe they'll add the features in the uh, future, but even if they don't, I feel like I'm very happy adjusting or editing photos on a Mac like this for free. It's completely free instead of having to pay hundreds of dollars every year. So that's how I edit photos on my Mac with the Photos app for my Fujifilm photos. For Sony, for some reason, I don't know why, it will not load the raw photos. So that's super annoying. I don't know if it's like a Sony problem or Mac or Apple's, like they, they have to talk to each other. So that's how I do it. I hope you guys like this kind of videos, just a really casual me teaching or not even teaching, just sharing how I usually do my job and do my work. If you have any kind of suggestions, if I'm doing anything incorrectly, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I will really, really appreciate them. Let me know if you like this kind of video in the future as well, and I will see you guys in the next one.